Hi there, and welcome to the Alpha Male 2.0 podcast, freedom-focused lifestyle designed for men, dating multiple attractive women, location, independent income, the freest lifestyle available to the modern day man. You're gonna like this. We're gonna have some fun today. Oh man, let's talk about Pamela Anderson. She's back in the news now. She uh, did a documentary or a book or something to kind of respond to the Pam and Tommy series they did about her last year. And if you have no idea who Pamela Anderson is, I'm sure you do, but if you didn't, I'm sure you do, but if for some reason you don't, she was a big, big, big sex symbol in the 90s and early aughts, uh, blonde, beach blonde, big boobies, all the stuff that uh, guys like me liked. I liked her back in those days. I thought she was pretty hot. Never liked her eyebrows, but uh, you know, whatever. I'm not picky, I'll take it. And uh, in this podcast, I am gonna go through her dating life. Now, you have never seen anything like this. See, you think you know. When you think of dating Pamela Anderson, you think of like Kid Rock and Tommy Lee. Oh, no, 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 no. Get ready. And then I'm gonna do an analysis on this because this applies to a lot of people. It may even apply to you. It may even apply to women you are dating or have dated or are currently with. This gets very, very interesting. So I'm gonna read off a screen over here. I'm gonna go through, I'm gonna summarize her dating life since the 90s. She is in her, she is well in her 50s now. I believe she's in her, well, let's see, early to late 50s. She's a few years older than me, but this goes back from her 20s all the way into her 50s. This is insanity. Get ready. Okay. Actually, wait a second. Before I do this, you're going to think as I go through this, well, that's because she's some dumb bimbo. Incorrect. That is not true. I'll cover that when I'm done going through the history. She is not a dumb bimbo. That's why this is so interesting. Okay. So first off, obviously we have Tommy Lee, drummer from Motley Crue, one of my favorite bands from the 80s because I grew up in the 80s and I like heavy metal and so I'm all over that. I have all of Motley Crue's old 80s albums. Good stuff. And not my favorite band, but I liked them a lot. So anyway, they were married on February 19th, 1995, after only knowing him for four days. Okay? All right. Oh, it gets worse. So she married this guy, met this guy, within four days, married him. Her mom didn't even know till her mom saw it in a People magazine. Okay? They were divorced in 1998. So that's a three-year marriage. That's gonna be one of the longer marriages she's going to have. Get ready, all right? Then they had long custody battles over their sons. And he also, during the marriage, was sentenced to six months, Los Angeles County Jail, for assaulting her. So let me make sure you understand this. He beat her up, and he also had a huge custody battle with her, okay? Keep that in mind as we go forward. This is important, okay? Then she almost instantly became engaged to the model Marcus Schreckenberg. I don't know who that is. And they broke up in 2001. So again, that's about a three, four year relationship or so. Then famously, I remember when this happened, she became engaged to the singer Kid Rock. That was in 2001, broke up with him in 2003. Two years, okay? Then out of the blue in 2006, Three years after this, she announced she would marry Kid Rock. So she went back to Kid Rock. Okay, interesting. And there were some rumors that she actually was pregnant, got pregnant by him, and that's why she got married. Uh, I believe she actually miscarried that. I'm not sure about that. Actually, yes, November 10th, 2006, it was announced that Anderson had miscarried while in Vancouver shooting a new film. 17 days later, November 27, 2006, Anderson filed for divorce. So, I, I sorry, I missed that. They got married in 2006 and got divorced in 2006. Okay, isn't that great? Now, let's keep going. Right after that, this is late 2006, she starts dating Tommy Lee again, the guy who beat her up and you know she was fighting with her kids with. She starts having sex with him again. Then in 2008, they try to they start out as friends with benefits, apparently, and then they tried to reconcile and get serious in 2008. Great. However, this didn't really match because in 2007, before this, while she was hooking up with Tommy Lee, she got engaged to another person, Rick Solomon. Rick Solomon is basically a poker player, and if you don't know who Rick Solomon is, I actually wrote about him back in 2008, a long time ago. Rick Solomon is one of these Hollywood super players. If you do some research on Rick Solomon, you should see all the smoking hot, famous women he's had sex with. It's kind of crazy. So she's gonna marry this player. <laughs> they get engaged in 2007. 
They were married in October of 2007 and a small wedding ceremony at the Mirage in Las Vegas. So they're married in October. By December, they are separated. They're divorced by the following February. Okay, so she was married about four or five months. Okay, oh, we're not even getting started. We have so much more to go. Check this out. This is insanity, okay? In 2013, she stated that she and Rick Solomon were now back together as friends with benefits. She went back to this guy again. So she has this pattern of going back to these really fucked up or player-ish guys. My God. In January 2014, she announced she had remarried Solomon at an unspecified date. So she married him again. Do you think that's going to work out? One year later, February 2015, divorced. Finalized in April 2015. So she was married a year. Okay. All right. Now, immediately she starts dating French footballer Adil Rami. I don't know who that is. This is in 2017. By 2013, declared that she had broken up with him. Two-year relationship. Okay. Now, I want to I want to make a note here. I want to pause here for a second. She is not a young, dumb chick in her 20s at this point. She is now well into her 40s, her late 40s, and she's still doing this shit, okay? You think it's done? That's pretty late news, right? That's, you know, 2019. That was just a few years ago. Oh, no. Now she turns 50, and January 2020, oh, my God, she marries... Hollywood producer, John Peters. If you don't know who John Peters is, I suggest you do some Googling around or, or some YouTube searches. John Peters is a, an eccentric, psychotic Hollywood producer. The guy is off the chart insane. He's weird as fuck. Kevin Smith, before he went insane and he lost himself, back in the 90s, did a famous little thing on stage where he talked about John Peters because they were gonna make a Superman movie. And John Peters invited Kevin Smith over to his house because Kevin Smith was going to write the movie. And John Peters said, okay, we're going to make a Superman movie. It's going to be awesome. But I have three rules. Number one, he can't fly. That's bullshit. People can't fly. Superman can't fly. Number two, he can't wear that suit. That suit's bullshit. Pfft. Okay. Number three, he has to fight a giant spider in the third act. It's, it's, it's a hilarious story that Kevin Smith tells. What's really funny is the movie ended up not being made. But instead, John Peters went off to make the movie Wild Wild West. And at the end of that movie, there's a giant spider. It's fucking hilarious. This guy is a wild man. And Pamela Anderson, in her fucking 50s, out of the blue, not dates this guy, not hooks up this guy, marries this guy. Okay? So you think this will work out? January of 2020, she marries him. February of 2020, they're separated. It lasted one month. She's in her 50s. She's still doing this shit. Okay? Are we done? Are we done now? We must be done. Hopefully. I mean, obviously, she must have learned her lesson by now, right? Of course, right? Nope. That same year in December 2020, she marries her bodyguard. She's now like 53 years old. <laughs> oh, no, back then, 51, something like that. You think that's going to last? December 2020, she marries her bodyguard. January 2022, one year later, she ends the marriage. Okay. Now, to address what I know you're thinking, I, I mentioned this earlier. Well, Caleb, that's Pamela Anderson. She's dumb. She's a dumb blonde bimbo. She's a dumbass. Of course, she makes dumb decisions. No. Pamela Anderson, if you watch her in interviews, is actually highly intelligent. She's very intelligent. She's very articulate. She's not a dumb bimbo. You don't have to be dumb to make dumb decisions, as I talk about a lot in my YouTube videos and my other content. I have an entire term for lissig. Low-income smart guys. These are guys with high incomes who never make a lot of money because they can't control themselves emotionally, kind of like Pamela Anderson. If you want an example of how smart and articulate Pamela Anderson is, or at least can be, there's a clip of this on YouTube. She was on The View back when uh, Julian Assange was arrested. I want to say somewhere around 2017, somewhere around, I don't remember. The View women are all attacking Julian Assange and how horrible he is, and every point they make Pamela Anderson very calmly, very intelligently, very articulately counterpoints them and gives them facts. It was beautiful. She was amazing in that little clip. And things like, for example, Pamela Anderson back in the early 2000s had a show called VIP. Uh, it was hilarious. It was, <laughs> it was a show that she owned 
because she saw from what David Hasselhoff did with Baywatch that if she owns the show and it does well, she gets the profits on syndication and things like that. And the show actually did well because it was a low budget show and she made a lot of money. She has actually made a lot of very good business decisions because she's not dumb. I realize she looks dumb and when women have a high squeaky voice, they come off as dumb. My wife kind of is in that category. People think she's dumb because she has a high voice. She's not, she's not dumb. Go watch VIP, go watch that show. You can watch clips of it on YouTube. I, funny, because I used to watch that show when my daughter was little, back 20 years ago when my daughter was like little, little. She liked the show. I liked the show because basically the show, it's totally stupid, but it worked. It, it's this low budget show about these four hot chicks with big tits and this little Asian guy. And they're a team and they go solve crimes. It's hilarious. <laughs> and I used to watch it because I liked the titties. And my daughter would watch it because she likes strong girls. She's kind of a tomboy. So there you go. Now, why would Pamela Anderson make these kinds of decisions if she's intelligent? Well, Kayla, that leads to a personality issues, deep personality problems. So yes, Pamela Anderson, I know, had a lot of problems in her past and her childhood. I believe she was R-A-P-E-D um, and assaulted in various ways when she was young. Um, also, here's another smart thing she did. She avoided ever hanging out and spending the night at the Playboy Mansion. So she would go there for events, but she wouldn't spend the night there. And if you know the things that have come out about the Playboy Mansion in the last three, four years, it was kind of a hell on earth for a lot of women there. It was pretty horrible. But she avoided all that intelligently. She said, no, 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 I'll get a hotel. She was smart. She was able to do this. And a lot of women, some of them smarter than her, didn't do this. You can attribute this to unmet emotional needs. You can attribute this to childhood experiences. Certainly Pamela Anderson is the kind of person who needs to be talking to a therapist and really digging into herself and figuring out what the fuck is wrong with her, that she's making these psychotic decisions well into her 30s, 40s, and 50s. And I wanna make that distinction. Lots of people in their 20s make stupid decisions, get, and get into stupid marriages, and have babies and kids when they shouldn't, and get divorced. Uh, you're looking at one. Well, I got married when I was 24, 25 years old. I was divorced within nine years because I was a fucking kid getting married. Don't do that. But if you're doing that in your 30s, your 40s, your 50s, what's wrong with you? You're constantly getting in and out, in and out of these marriages, not good. This goes back to show you that even though you are successful, even though you are wealthy, even though you are highly intelligent, even though you are highly articulate, you can still make ridiculously horrific, stupid decisions in your personal life. I will give you my favorite exhibit, exhibit A, I've talked about him many times, Scott Adams, my buddy Scott Adams, who wrote many articles years ago about how horrible marriage is, what a stupid idea it is, why would anyone ever possibly do this, and he gave all these factually accurate reasons as to why, because he just went through a divorce, and then of course within a few years, he marries some young girl, right, some young cute girl with big titties, and he's divorced I think within a year and a half. And it's not like he didn't know any better, he wrote specific articles about why it's a bad idea to do that, but he fucking did it anyway. And now you have this woman going around on social media saying horrific things about him. There was a video of her that went viral where she said um, she went home to him and had, she said, I have a cancer diagnosis. And his reaction was, oh, great. Now that's yet another reason you can find and not have sex with me. And she's going around saying this publicly to everybody. Now, you might be defending Scott Adams and say, well, she's lying. She's just a bitch. And how, why would you believe that? Well, one of two scenarios is true. Either he did say that and he is the biggest fucking beta male on planet Earth when he knows better because he knows about these alpha male distinctions. I read his articles about this many years ago pre-Trump. Or option two, he showed horribly bad judgment. Not only having sex, but living with and dating with and marrying a woman who is angry and psychotic enough to go around and make up lies about him and spread them all over the internet. That does not reflect well on Scott Adams Regardless of, it's, and it's one of those two options, regardless of one of those two options, he looks really bad. Because even though he's highly intelligent, highly articulate, smart guy, understands the world to a degree, he still makes these horrifically stupid decisions. And I promise you, he's not done making stupid decisions. He's gonna keep doing it, just like Pamela Anderson's gonna keep doing it. High intelligence or financial success does not mean you are proof against fucking up your personal life with horrifically stupid ass decisions. I personally know men who have done this, who are highly intelligent, successful guys, who have destroyed their lives repeatedly over and over again with stupid business decisions. These big celebrities are not the only people. And I don't want you to write this off, well, these are just big dumb celebrities. It's not true, it's not right. 
A lot of guys seem to think, well, I'm a smart guy. And I'll never make that mistake because I'm smart. I went to college. My IQ is this. And, I, and I've read a bunch of red pill books. And I've studied all this PUA stuff. And I'm not going to make these stupid mistakes. Do you know how many pickup artists I've seen make these exact same mistakes over and over and over again? Do you know how many really intelligent men in business, self-made multi-multi-millionaires, make these exact same goddamn mistakes over and over and over again? Intelligence is not the only factor. You need to be rational. And you need to have, say with me, emotional control. And if you don't have rationality and emotional control in addition to intelligence, you're fucked. And some of you might need to go see a therapist. Some of you might need to do some, some self-searching. Some of you might need to read some self-help books and figure out what is wrong with you as to why you've made the decisions if that's you. Because I know there's several of you in my audience, many of you in my audience, who are in the Pamela Anderson category. You're getting into one horrifically bad relationship after the next. And it's a pattern of behavior and you can't stop. You got to stop. And you might be very intelligent. And maybe you haven't made this mistake yet. Maybe you're a young guy and you say, well, that'll never happen to me because I'm smart. And you're like 26. Oh, no. There are piles of dead bodies of men who used to be 26 and smart who made these exact same stupid decisions. Just be aware of this. Self-awareness. It's important. It's not just about being smart or just about being financially successful in business. It's also about emotional control in your personal life. Cool? Cool. I'll see you in the next podcast. Have fun. Bye.